How did the man who almost broke Star Trek go on to break the bat? This is the evolution of Tom Hardy. The British actor has played Bane, Bronson, Mad Max, and Venom, but Tom Hardy's biggest transformation was himself, and it started in the early years. Tom Hardy was born in London's Hammersmith district in 1977 to parents who were both deeply involved in the arts. His father, Edward, was a screenwriter and novelist, while his mother, Anne, was a well-known painter. But despite his comfortable upbringing, Hardy had a troubled youth. He was kicked out of boarding school for stealing, then spent time in and out of jail for crimes ranging from disorderly conduct to gun possession. Throughout it all, though, Hardy was always interested in acting. Growing up, he idolized his fellow Brit, Gary Oldman, but Hardy's original aspiration was to be a model. In 1998, at the age of 21, he won a TV contest that nabbed him a short-lived modeling contract. He also tried his hand at hip-hop, recording a mixtape under the name Tommy No. 1 that didn't resurface until 2018. Man, little Hitler bitches, little twitches, sitting on their promises with their shoulder holsters, buddy teeth sharks, posters of themselves kissing babies. It's bullshit. You bullshit. Give me some truth. Hardy couldn't resist the call of stage and screen for long, though. The same year he won the contest, Hardy enrolled at Drama Center London, where he studied alongside classmates like Michael Fassbender. But before he could finish his studies, both actors were called up to make their on-screen debuts in Steven Spielberg's groundbreaking miniseries Band of Brothers. The gritty war drama launched a dozen careers, including Hardy's, and it led directly into his first films. After Band of Brothers, he moved on to another military role in Ridley Scott's influential action film, Black Hawk Down. Hardy, who would later earn a reputation for undergoing incredible physical transformations for his films, endured a grueling week-long training camp to convincingly portray an army ranger in the true life thriller. After excelling in ensembles, Hardy was ready to take a lead role in 2002's Star Trek Nemesis. Headlining one of pop culture's most prestigious properties placed a huge amount of pressure on the young actor, and the fact that he was playing a clone of Patrick Stewart's iconic Captain Picard didn't help either. Nemesis was a box office bomb, and even though Hardy's performance was praised, the film was so bad that it nearly killed the Star Trek franchise. Our destiny's complete. The actor took the film's failure hard, spiraling into a deep depression that almost led to suicide. International fame would have to wait, because Hardy spent the next few years finding himself. Hardy became addicted to crack cocaine and alcohol at a young age, and despite his early success, he continued to fight his demons into his mid-twenties. His battles came to a head in 2003, when after a night of binging, he collapsed in a pool of vomit and blood on a London street. He checked into treatment soon after, and he's been clean and sober ever since. As he worked on improving himself, Hardy also spent these years rehabilitating his career. He began taking roles on the stage in British television, like the sci-fi reboot A for Andromeda, the BBC biopic Stewart, A Life Backwards, and a miniseries called The Virgin Queen, where he met his wife, Charlotte Riley. Hardy's profile continued to rise after portraying a gangster called Handsome Bob in a Guy Ritchie movie called Rock and Rolla, but it was his next role that truly made him a star, Bronson. Hardy gained 42 pounds in five weeks to portray Britain's most notorious inmate, Charles Bronson. While researching the role, Hardy spent plenty of time with the brutal brawler in his tiny cell, forming an unlikely friendship. The real Bronson was so impressed with the actor, he actually shaved off his trademark mustache and mailed it to the film set so they could build the most authentic prop possible. Bronson gave Hardy a ton of buzz, and after the indie film exceeded expectations, Hardy was primed for a blockbuster resurgence. Given his real-life run-ins with the law, Hardy has always excelled at playing criminals, crooks, and lowlifes, which led director Christopher Nolan to cast him as the suave, smooth-talking forger Eames in his mind-bending 2010 heist film Inception. He was back to being part of an ensemble, but Hardy's unforgettable presence nearly outshined the rest of the cast. Thank you. So, now we're trapped in Fisher's mind battling his own private army, and if we get killed, we'll be lost in limbo till our brains turn to scrambled egg. In fact, it earned him a BAFTA Rising Star Award almost 10 years after his film debut. The next year, Hardy got to live out a childhood dream, acting opposite his hero Gary Oldman in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. And after filming on the dense, cerebral espionage film rap, Hardy went back to the gym to bulk up for his starring role in the MMA drama Warrior. After putting on 28 pounds of muscle, Hardy was ready for his biggest role yet, Bane, the hulking revolutionary who broke the bat in The Dark Knight Rises. Oh, you think darkness is your ally? You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. In 
2015 alone, he starred in five films, most notably Mad Max Fury Road. Although compared to Furiosa, the road warrior himself was far from the star of the film. And The Revenant, for which he received his first Academy Award nomination. Last year, he strapped on an oxygen mask as a heroic RAF pilot in Nolan's Dunkirk. And next, we'll see Hardy in a much different kind of costume when he portrays the lethal protector Venom in the Spider-Man villain's first solo movie. Tom Hardy has overcome his troubled past to become one of Hollywood's hardest working actors, and his efforts have been royally recognized. In 2018, Queen Elizabeth appointed him as Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, or CBE, for his contributions to the art of drama. And while it's not quite a knighthood yet, given how fast his star has risen, we might be calling him Sir Tom Hardy soon enough. Thanks for watching the evolution of. We'd love to know who you want to see covered in future installments, so leave a comment below. And while you're down there, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.